Hey, Menno, what are you doing here? Hey, Tim. I'm uh, preparing my lesson for tomorrow. Preparing a lesson? Yeah. In, in the park? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just checking out all the materials we're going to use tomorrow, if they're safe and everything. Because um, the students in the classroom always see the same things. You know, they see the desk, they see the same chair, they see the same window. So what we try to do is take the students outside and actually prepare them for active, uh, active lessons. So tomorrow we're going to the park and we're going to show them a lot of things about nature and how this relates to their studies. Okay, thank you. This sounds great. Yeah, yeah. you want to see it? I'll yeah. See, I can show you around. Yeah, that's what we're fine. Going to prepare. Let's go. Okay, nice to see you, man. <laughs> preparing this active studies or this walking studies for tomorrow because research have shown that using uh, the outside world and not only the classroom the blood circulation in the brains of the students will be different it means that they get different stimuli their creativity will start to rise a little bit more and they will re remember certain things connected to certain objects that's why we try to do our lessons from time to time outside Sounds good, uh, Menno, but uh, how does it work with your teaching materials? Do you take it with you or do you set it up along the route? Uh, tell me about it. Yeah, so the first thing I'm going to do is to check the environment, see what we can use in this environment and see how we can actually work together with it. So that's why I'm here, to prepare the lesson and see what all can go wrong or what we can use. This I will combine with the materials I already have and I will set it up along the route and to make sure that, uh, that it's there when it's needed. Can you give me an example, uh, Menno, of outside uh, studies, of active studies and environments? Okay, yeah, I'll give you an example. For example, this bench. It can be used in many different ways. The bench now is really cold, so you can teach something about physics. Why is the bench cold? How does it get cold? But also about for communication purposes. How is external uh, stimuli influence your communication? Imagine sitting here together with another student doing the interview. The interview will be completely different than when we do it in the classroom. Um, but also to, on other days it will be diff different. There will be sun maybe, there will be people. So we can teach the hard skills like telling this, this is really, really cold and these are the reasons, but also the soft skills. So active studies are can be used in many different uh, subjects. So did you know, Pim, that there are actually three types of active studies? One, walking studies. Two, educational games on the move. And three, study visits. Okay, can you tell me about study visits? What are they? Uh, well, study visit. Where then you visit a certain organization, like a company, or uh, an NGO, or something like that, to see how they work. So you take your students out of the classroom, into the real world, and 
they see actually people doing it and they get lessons from people who are in real practice. For example, if you can go there to that hotel and restaurant, uh, our students learned there how they can do communication and what kind of communication is needed to attract the people in the park. So, about the educational games on the move. These are really useful for students, you know, to work together on a certain task in a non-formal way. So, for example, having a real-life problem and solving it by using puzzles, creative working methods, etc. For example, we did during an introduction of one of our minor programs. We let the students solve a puzzle, so they start working together. They learned about what kind of person they are and how they behave in a teamwork. After that, we reflected on it and the students immediately saw how theory worked in practice. So Menno, how do you prepare such a lesson? Uh, what do you have to take in account? Well, there are a few things. First of all, think about your learning objectives. Not every subject or study visit or is actually useful to get your learning objectives. Secondly, um, make sure that you are well prepared. So check the route, get your materials ready, get your materials adapted to the surroundings. And third, practice. Practice and practice again. So test, test, test and reflect.
So Menno, tell me, what skills do you need as a teacher to give uh, good active studies? Well, we are still doing research on that part and it's of course never one size fits all, so every teacher is different. But in general, teachers need to be um, explorers, I would say. So they have to be open for new things, make sure that they uh, are adaptive to the environment and that they can be creative and that they can let go. Because outside, you never know what you can expect. And it means that sometimes you just have to adapt to the situation. No, it was very uh, clarifying for me and for your clear explanation. Thank you. Uh, from Active Studies. Uh, an extra advantage is that you make your 10,000 steps a day, uh, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you easily reach that. And um, if you want to know more, uh, there are some manuals and handbooks and things like this on the site. Okay. Uh, so you can check it out. I have a look. Okay, Great. thank you. I hope to see you next time here again. Bye, Menno. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.